We have some good questions coming out about uh, shoulder rehabilitation and about problems with neural drive. And I had mentioned before that if it's a neurological problem, um, I want to attack it with neurological type treatments. Um, now, when you're treating someone, let's say the subclavius is, is non-functional, you're getting uh, posterior rotation of the clavicle right away upon uh, beginning or initiating your abduction movement. There could be the problem that the subclavius is not doing its job. It's not holding that subclavius down until you get about 90 degrees. That could be a problem of neural drive. It could be a problem with fibrosis leading to a decreased uh, functionality of that muscle. If you go in and you palpate tension underneath that clavicle in the method that we just showed you, sometimes releasing the tissue, avoiding uh, it of any abnormal fibrosis, can immediately cause that muscle to start functioning. So it's like a spinal reflex. You just get that muscle free of any uh, uh, impeding fibrosis or scar tissue. That spinal reflex goes through. All of a sudden, the muscle gets turned on. I hate to say turned on. Uh, that's not really what it's on a light switch, but the muscle starts to function better. Sometimes the muscle doesn't start to function better, and in which case I'm thinking there might have been a long-lasting neural drive issue. In that case, I might, in the case of the subclavius, I might thread a needle into the subclavius and activate that needle with a pointer plus, stimulate the motor uh, output of that muscle, and then remove it and try the abduction again. Sometimes I get normal reduction of the restored. So then the conclusion might be that it's really a neural drive problem. So the question is, what do you do with, with a neural drive problem? Well, you can use motor point acupuncture. That's one way to increase neural drive. I use PALES, progressive angular isometric loading, to help increase neural drive. So the inevitable question is, how can isometric loading increase, increase neural drive? Well, isometric loading is probably one of the best ways to increase neural drive. And um, a good example as to how people have intuitively discovered this is if you look at power lifters um, getting through the sticky points in a lift. So for example, uh, when you're bench pressing, there's an area there where it's the most difficult, you need the most force output to overcome in order to lift the weight, so they call it the sticking point. What is one of the ways that uh, power lifters overcome sticking points? They use isometric <coughs> contraction in that range of the sticky point. Now why do they do this? If you look at the uh, Henman size principle, if you look at how motor units are recruited during contraction, the harder the resistance that you're lifting against, the more motor units and the larger motor units that you're going to activate in order to overcome that uh, resistance. What is the ultimate way to activate all of the motor units in a particular muscle? Have the muscle contract against an immovable object. What is the immovable object? What does that mean? That means you're, in, you're introducing isometric contraction. So isometric contraction is a great way to teach the nervous system how to uh, impart maximal drive into a particular muscle. Okay? That's one of the benefits of progressive angular isometric loading as well as regressive angular isometric loading that we talk about in FR. Um, now what's the downside? It's not really a downside, but the downside with isometric type uh, contractions is the uh, benefit of strength will only be applied plus or minus 10 degrees of where you were performing the isometric contraction. So if you're doing the isometric contraction here into abduction, you will become stronger 10 degrees this way, 10 degrees this way, but you will not become stronger if you put yourself down here. It's only plus or minus approximately 10 <coughs> degrees. So what does that tell you? That tells you, that's the reason why I don't, we don't just do isometric training, we do progressive angular isometric loading. Because with progressive angular isometric loading, you're increasing your angle by approximately 10 to 15 degrees at a time. So you're strengthening here, plus or minus 10, you're progressing the angle, plus or minus 10, progressing the angle, plus or minus 10, also regressing the angle, plus or minus 10, plus or minus 10, plus or minus 10. So once you're done, with an entire uh, PALES um, rehabilitation program, you have increased neural drive and you've increased strength over an entire arc of motion if you add up all of the tens. Okay? Now you can very easily start to incorporate more dynamic type exercises 
and because you have, to your um, uh, ability, you have a very good range of motion. You have strength throughout the entire range. So that's how we use uh, pails in order to increase neural drive or to deal with uh, problems with, uh, with, with neural drive into muscular tissue.